Now, the goal behind this series is for everyone that watches this particular series on the corset to be able to create a beautiful piece for yourself and yes we have gotten to the joining stage now please make sure you've seen the previous video where i used the masking tape on the bra cup because that is necessary you need it for this episode and also hope you've seen the bonus video where i show you a detailed process of how i cut out my pattern on the fabric and on the lining also how i added interfacing to both the lining and the fabric okay go see it and come join us on this particular episode if you have your piece cut out get ready because we're about to start joining okay now what is step one step one is for us to join the front and the back piece together okay very simple now after cutting your pattern on the fabric and on the lining you should have one piece of the main piece for the front and one piece of lining for the front and then you should have two piece for the main piece of the back and two lining for the back okay so this is my front and you can see that the lining and the main piece has interfacing already on it that is why you need to go see that bonus video okay so yeah this is my front piece and this is how it's looking i actually love the fabric i used for this because that's like it's just giving vintage okay now this is my back piece and like i said you need to have four piece two piece for the main and two piece for the lining and what i'm doing right now i'm notching the top of my back piece so when i'm joining i don't make a mistake so this is the top and i just made a notch you can see this is the top this is the center back this is the side and the base okay so i just made a notch on the top and that is going to help me join this piece later okay now i'm just going to take out the particular piece that matches the is this the right side yes that matches the right side of my front and now i'm just going to show you guys how i'll be joining okay so this particular piece or this particular back piece matches the side of my front piece i'm just going to place the both of them together and sew by one inch you guys remember when i was drafting out the pattern i added just one inch as my allowance and i'm just going to take in that particular one inch right now okay that is what i am sewing in so what i'm trying to say is that whenever you add allowance for sewing on your pieces remember to take in that particular allowance but if it's ease allowance you don't need to sew that in because ease allowance is ease allowance but if it's seam allowance sewing allowance remember to take it in okay now i am done this is how it's looking now this part of the front has the back attached to it and i'm just going to trim out a little bit of excess because i sewed in one inch so i have like a whole lot of excess so i'm just going to take out quarter an inch excess and i will repeat the same thing for the other side i will attach the back piece to the other side of my front piece so yeah i'm just going to bring in the back piece for the side and thank god i have my notch i already know how to place it and so hope that wasn't too much explanation <laughs> i just want you guys to grab okay i want you to grab everything everything i want you to grab everything okay so i'll place it and i will sew in by exact one inch like I did for the other side. I'm just going to take in one inch. Now you need to take your time while joining your pieces together, okay? Take your time, girl. You're a beginner. You shouldn't be rushing anything at all. You shouldn't rush, okay? Take your time. And I'll do the same thing I did for the other side. I'm just going to take out a little bit of excess. And then we're going to move into the second step step two is for us to create a channel for the boning now this particular stage or this particular step is very easy okay so we're going to be creating the channels for the boning and to do this i'm going to fold my front piece to two equal parts okay where i have the curve where i have my breast curve 
I'm just going to align everything together and then I'll fold this to two equal parts. See me fold to two equal parts. Make sure you confirm. Once I am satisfied, I'm just going to go ahead and make a notch. So I'll make a notch. The first notch wasn't visible, so I'll make another one. And now I have the middle point of my breast curve on both sides of my cuffs, if you get what I mean. On the point where I have my notches, I'm going to rule a line like this. Okay, rule a line on the middle. That's the center front. And yeah, that is how I'll be creating my corset boning channel, okay? So the channels I'm creating is just three channels. One is going to be sitting here at the center front. This is the middle part of the center front. Yeah, this part is the center front. The next one is going to sit here on one of the notches I just made. And see the way I just slant my ruler to get this particular um, channel. So you can decide to do whatever channel you want. At this point, girl, it's your project. So go ahead and design it how you want it, okay? But this is how I want my corset to be looking, how I want my boning channels to be sitting. And I'm just going to create it the way I want it, okay? <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new, okay? So this is how it's going to be looking. And... um. From the wrong side, I'm going to be sewing my bias on the lines I just created, okay? So right now, I'm just going to place the bias and cut according to the length it is supposed to be, okay? So yeah, I'm just going to double this because this, this side and the other side tallies. They are the same length. So I'll just cut out two here and here. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out for the middle. So you can decide to place your bias at the right side of the fabric and not the wrong side. But because I want my channels to be invisible channels, that is why I'm doing it this way, okay? You don't have to do it like me. If you want your bias to be visible on the right side, go ahead and create these channels on the right side of your fabric, okay? Now let's go ahead and sew. So yeah, um, I have done this other side and I'm just going to show you guys what I did. I'll go ahead and make two stitches, okay? I'll sew one stitch on this side of the bias, making sure I sew at the extreme, okay? At the end of this side. And then I'll cut out the thread and move to the other side of the bias, the same bias. I'll sew on the other side. Now, what I just did is create a channel in between the bias for my boning to pass through, okay? For my bone. Or boning <laughs> to pass through okay and yeah this is how it's gonna look on the right side invisible channel created yay me <laughs> yay, 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 yay. so proud of this step now go ahead and do the same thing for the middle i'll sew and create my channel and yeah you guys that is how i created my invisible channel for my corset so this is how it's looking. You can see the three channels and yeah, this is it. Now we're going to be creating the back channel. And for my back channel, I actually didn't pass boning. I just created a channel, but I didn't use boning. Let me show you guys what I'm going to do. Now this is the back. This is the center back, okay? I'm going to mark 0 0.75 inch in from the center back. So this is how 0 0.75 looks on your tape. I'm just going to place that on the center back. And I'll mark this from the top to the base. And I'll rule a line. So remember, I marked in 0 0.75 inch on my center back. And I'm just going to rule a line, a straight line. I'm using the blue chalk so that this whole thing is going to be visible to you, okay? And let me know if it's visible, if you are seeing all the steps. Now, this is the bias I'm going to be using. And I created this bias myself with the actual fabric I'm using, okay? So you can decide to use um, the normal bias or you can create a bias by yourself using your own fabric. But yeah, this is what I'm going to use. I'll place this after the 0 0.75 line. 
and now i'm just gonna cut the length i need And then I'll just go sew um, this bias after that line. Let's go sew, let's go sew, okay? So yeah, this is how I'm sewing this. Remember I said after the line, I'm just going to sew a stitch at the side, very, very close to the end of the fabric at the side. And then I'll sew another stitch on the other side. Like I'm making two stitches line on the sides of this particular bias. And this is just going to help me create a channel for if I want to pass boning, but I'm not going to pass boning though. If I want to pass boning, there is a channel created in the middle already. Doing this step creates a channel. And this is how it looks. So this step is done. Step three is for us to attach the cup. I know a lot of you have problem with this step. I used to have problem with this step, but I am going to tell you right now confidently that I no longer have problem with this. Yes, I don't longer have problem with this. So now you guys remember the notch I made when I was trying to create my channel. Now I'll just use my blue chalk to make that notch visible at the right side. That's the middle notch on the curve. That is the notch. Now I'll go ahead and fold my cup into two equal parts. And at the base of the cup, I'll make a notch also. This is me creating the middle point on the cup, okay? So that's the middle point. Now, all we have to do is place the middle point on the cup to the middle point here, okay? Use your pins, girl. You need to use your pins for this step. Now, use your pins. Place the middle point of the cup to the middle point on your curve. Now, go ahead and align the cup to that curve that you have created for the cup to sit in use your pin align it make sure it sits well before you start sewing so that's what i'm trying to do the two middle points are sitting together now i have to pin the rest and confirm if i'm actually doing the right thing okay let me go ahead and continue pinning And this is just to help me confirm okay you need to confirm the result before you sew and you can use your pin to do that a lot of you that have been complaining about having problem with your cup doesn't sit right this is it okay you just go ahead and confirm first and now you can go ahead and sew knowing that you have confirmed if it's going to sit right now look at what i am seeing this is going to actually sit right so let's go ahead and sew So I'm just going to take off the pins because I have my middle points and it's going to help me actually sew in this cup. Now I'll place the two middle points together. I'll start sewing from the middle point to the left side and I'll sew to the center front. Um, left side, center front. I hope I'm not confusing you guys. So I'm just going to sew from the middle point to the side. And I'm taking my time, okay? Take your time. I'm taking my time. I'm following the curve. And I'm sewing on the um, part on the curve that has been created for you to sew on, okay? There is a line that has been created for you to sew on on the curve. That is what I'm following to sew in my curve. And I'm making sure I sew this in by the allowance I left on the curve while we are drafting out this pattern. Remember, we left like half an inch allowance around the curve. Now, that is what I'm taking in, okay? Like I said, always remember to take in the allowance you leave for any project. If you leave an allowance to sew in anything, make sure you use the allowance, okay? I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Take my time, sew in by half an inch, but on the cup, I'm just sewing in by the line that has been left or created for me to sew on. But then on the fabric, I'm making sure I sew in half an inch, okay? So you can see the fabric is actually popping out before the cup because I want to make sure I take in the particular half an inch I left on that curve. And yes, my cup has been carefully sewn in and this is how it looks. Now I'm just going to go ahead and attach the other cup um, behind the camera and now it's time for us to trim so after joining this is what i realized i have ss now girl at this point you have the option to trim 
and that's what we're going to do we're going to trim out the excess on the center front on the sides that's the back we're going to trim it out and to do this i'm just going to use my straight ruler to align the center front to the cup you see i just aligned it and then i'll do the same thing on the side or at the back i'm just going to align the side of the front to the back now at this point you can decide to slant it down but i'm not doing that i'm going to slant it but not too much okay i'm just going to do this i'll align the sides like this and i'll fold my corset top into two equal parts i want to trim that side i just um ruled my chalk I want to trim it out and i want it to be equal that is why i fold it into two equal parts so when i cut on this side it's not going to affect the other side it's going to be the same so right now both folded into two equal parts and i'm just cutting the line i have created to cut out okay and this is how it's looking you see how everything is sitting well i'll do the same thing for the center front I'll cut out the blue line that I, that is my SS. The SS I have on the blue line. I'll just fold this into two equal parts and then I'll cut out the SS. Now, what I'm just trying to let you know is that whenever you're sewing and you find out that you have SS, girl, just go ahead and trim, okay? As far as you're not, um, it's not going to affect your cups. Go ahead and trim whatever you need to trim out, okay? So this is how it looks. This is the whole process done and it's looking good. Now, the same way we have sewn in the main piece is the same thing you should do on the lining, okay? Now, I'm not, I'm not going to be showing you guys what I did on the lining because the same way I joined the cup to the front and then attached the back to the front, the same way I did everything for the lining. So, the lining is like the duplicate of the main piece. And yes, I have sewn this in off the camera. And now, step four, we have to sew the main piece and the lining together. So this is my lining like i said the lining is a duplicate of the front of the main piece what am i saying front the lining is the duplicate of the main piece and you can see that my cup has been attached and then i made notches because yeah the cup needs to you know sit properly and you need notches for everything to sit properly so this is my main piece this is how it's looking i'm just going to go ahead and place my lining on it right side facing right side okay the good side facing the good side and before i join please note this while i was cutting my pattern on the fabric and the lining i made sure i placed the both lining and the main piece together the fabrics i placed them together that is why you need to go watch my bonus video on how i cut okay so i placed them together and i made sure i cut out both the lining and the main piece equally so the lining and the main piece are equal. The length, the size, the everything are equal. So yeah, for that reason, for the fact that I cut out equally the main piece and the lining, what I'll be doing right now is I'm going to pin the base of my top, okay? I'll pin both the lining and the main piece together from the base. Now, why I'm doing this is that I'm going to definitely have excess on the lining because I did not trim um, after joining the cup. So for me to avoid that excess to affect what I'm joining, I'm just pinning from the base, making sure that the base is equal. And now I'm going to sew in whatever excess is at the top. I'm just going to sew that in with my corset, okay, with my main piece, sorry. So if you can see the excess on the lining is popping out from the top that's the upper side because i pin the base of my top now i can use that to navigate whatever i'm sewing on the um, upper side of my corset okay i'm just going to use that to navigate for the lining because i have excess so i'm just going to use that to navigate and then i'll just use that to attach the lining to the main piece making sure that the base is equal that's why you see me pinning again just making sure it's equal and i'm just going to sew so when I'm done sewing and I have that excess of the lining on the top, I'm just going to trim that out, okay? But yeah, what I'm using to navigate right now is the base of my corset, the base of my top. So I am done. This is the resort. If I flip it to the right side, it's just looking so good. 
But no, we have to top stitch, so I'll flip it back. We have to top stitch. So step five is for us to top stitch on the lining. And in case you don't know what the meaning of top stitch is, this is it. So I'll flip it back to the wrong side. And now this is top stitching. I'm just going to sew like this, making sure that all the sewing allowance I have, I'm just going to place them on the lining side. And then I'll just sew, okay? Um, all the sewing we have, I'm just pushing everything to the lining and I'm just sewing that down, okay? And that is what I'm doing right now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if this video has been of help to you, okay? Let me know in the comment section, okay? Please do not forget to do that. Like this video. Like this video, girl. Like it, okay? Thank you for liking. So once I was done top stitching, this is how it looks. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and iron this so it sits flat. And we can move into the next step. Now the next step is for us to pass bone in through the channels we have created okay we're just going to pass the bone in and i'll be showing you how i did that so this is my corset with the lining sitting pretty and now i'm just going to open this up to the wrong side and we can pass the bone in okay i'm just showing this off right now <laughs> so i'll um, open this up to the wrong side and I'm just going to bring my boning. The boning I'm using for this particular corset is the hard type. This is just too hard. Once I was done um, creating this corset, I, I actually regretted using this particular boning. Now, the next um, corset video I'll be bringing to you guys, I'm just going to use the other one that you can sew on, okay? Because this one was really, I don't know, it was just piercing. It wanted to pierce every part of my body. <laughs> But anyways, to avoid those piercing, go ahead and use your lighter or your matches to burn the edges of the boning before placing them through the channel. Okay? And while you are passing your boning through the channel, make sure you leave like half an inch allowance because we're going to be sewing the base of the top and we don't want the boning to be in the way. Okay? You don't want it to be in the way because it's just going to break your needle. So make sure you have like half an inch left allowance after you finish passing your boning so i did that and i did not leave enough so i'm just going to bring it out again and then cut out a little bit out of the boning so that when i'm sewing the base of my top it's just not going to affect it so this same thing i did here i'm just going to do it for the rest of the channels i just wanted to show you guys what i did and yeah so right now i am done passing bonings through all the channels i'm just going to show you guys how it looks at the right side okay you can see it is invisible and it's just looking so good so step seven is for us to sew the lining and the main piece together from the base and on the wrong side so yeah i'll flip this back making the lining and the main piece um face right side facing right side <laughs> hope that wasn't confusing so i'm just placing the lining and the main piece right side facing the right side and now i'll just go sew by half an inch on the base okay half an inch like this around it around 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 we go so i'll sew half an inch on the base let's just go sew okay let's go so so now I'm just going to sew by half an inch. Now at this point, the channels and the boning is not going to be a problem because while cutting my boning, I made sure I made it half an inch shorter so I can have that allowance to sew this at the base. So yeah, so I'll carefully do this, carefully sew in the base. And once I'm done, I'll flip this to the right side. You guys, this is it, okay? This is it for the sewing version. And this is how I joined my piece together. I have made a separate video where I show you guys how to create the loops and how to create the puff sleeve, okay? Because I didn't want this particular video to be too long. Um, that is why I decided to separate it like this. But yeah, just click on the next episode and watch how I created the loops and how I created the puff sleeves. 
okay so this is how it's looking let's just go iron okay ironing is just going to be like ironing gives your whatever you're making gives it that look that game game look like like you have done a good job ironing is everything so go iron okay so i'll go ahead and iron and please 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 stay tuned for the next video which is how to create loops and how to create your puff sleeves and don't forget to like this video if you're new here go ahead and subscribe i love you guys so much i love the fact that we are doing beautiful things we are creating beautiful outfits and more videos to come thank you for watching i'll be seeing you guys on my next video bye for now